Recording. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. It's November the 4th. If you're here, please add your name to the attendees list. I'll just put the link to the hackpad in the chat. Uh, and if you are here at some point, please add your weekly update for async review to the bottom of the hack pad. And we will not go over the, it in the meeting, but people can look at it uh, and see what you've been doing for the past week uh, and comment and, uh, and ask you questions. When this, the meeting notes get PR'd to the team management repo. Uh, so thank you. Please add your update if you are here. Uh, we have a note taker, Jacob. Thank you very much. Um, and now we shall begin by going through the initiatives. Um, and we will start with the upgraded release process. Um, so I have to say that I think last week I said 039 actually got released. Um, and we are, we started the 040 release issue, but it, we have not yet branched off. And I was meant to do that today, but I did not uh, do that. But there's a couple of things in that in this next release, which is uh, uh, a repo migration tool, which I'm currently waiting, kind of blocked, I guess, on a pull request for that. Um, Adam is uh, is working on this. Uh, Adam is an awesome contributor who has been doing a whole bunch of stuff, but he has a job and he uh, does not always have time to continue things. So I might have to pull that over the line. Um, so yeah, that's that's the status of that. So maybe that gets dropped from this release. Anyway, so that's the only thing uh, I have to say about the release process for JSIPFS. Um, Stephen, do you have anything on Go IPFS releasing? Uh, nothing new this week. Okay, dokey. Cool. Um, any questions? Okay, no. All right. Uh, is anyone here to uh, update us on the testing infra and process? Doesn't look like. Stephen, you're probably adjacent to lots of test ground folks. How's it going? Do you, do you know? Uh, anything? It's going well. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's really any updates we should give here, but uh, yeah. I mean, uh, let's see. Um, let's change since last week. Uh, so we just got, like, I think it was. I can't remember how many notes. Basically, right now at the moment, Jim is trying to get as many notes as he can running the DHT test um, uh, on AWS. Uh, today, by the end of today, we're trying to get that done. Basically, trying to get the like, spinning notes up on uh, on AWS, like working automatically, um, and then also get like uh, some basic network controls, so, like latencies and stuff like that, done. Um, that's really the only update I have there. Do you know if? Dirk's bit swap um, changes have been uh, are being tested, or has, has progressed any further. Uh, so the bit swap changes have a work in progress test plan, which is just a description text. They have not been tested on uh, test ground. They're still trying to automate the actual like spinning up machines and stuff like that. So right now, like you can locally test things on your own machine, um, but like you can't like, well, you can't set latencies at the moment, which kind of means that you can't do any real world tests. You can't set bandwidth limits. Uh, you can't run it on AWS with like many different machines, stuff like that. So that's where we're trying to fix this week. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, any questions from anyone else on that? All right. Uh, in which case, let us move on to subdomain gateway. Lidl, what's going on? You're here. Yes, you are. Yep, I'm here. Uh, short update, uh, JS IP ID, uh, like my updates are mostly from the JS land. Uh, the pull request to add support for peers are represented as CIDs uh, uh, for JS peer ID. Uh, I, I believe uh, I addressed uh, the feedback. Uh, if you have spare time, Alan, just take the final look. I, just, I think that got merged just a little bit ago. Oh, I did. That's, that's perfect. Shit me. Uh, yep, and I also, while I was at that, I realized we sort of could uh, add support for IPNS, like CIDs in IPNS paths without 
sort of like being blocked by this entire async refactor to bubble up this PID change. And if you look at the second uh, PR, it's basically like one line change uh, that does not require any, any third party uh, dependency bumps. So I, I guess we could uh, ship that and I've added uh, in that PR to do to eventually uh, switch to a new version of peer ID. Uh, like details on, on the PR, but I feel uh, it's pretty useful to have it. I, it's mostly adding tests for CID v1 on IPNS paths. Uh, actual change is just one line. Uh, and and I, be, I, I believe that's, that's it. It's uh, separate top, like separate topic is switching to async version of JS peer ID. I sort of ha have those changes uh, like on my machine and I feel I can like submit them as a separate PR to not block this change. So I probably will submit them uh, as a, dra a PR draft. So it's, if someone is, it gets eventually to the peer ID, because uh, I don't know how to bubble that up on the, the Liki2P side, but at least on the JS side, we will see what's the scope of changes required. Uh, yep, I guess that's it for me. Cool, thank you, Lido. Um, yeah, I will look at that PR and please do submit the other one for the um, icing. Peer ID, if you have it, that would be super helpful. Cool. Uh, any questions for Lido? All right. Uh, moving swiftly on, we are distributed signaling still on hold. Yes. Correct. Yes. Still on hold. Um, IPNS. Uh, Aiden and Hugo. Who have we got? We've got Aiden here at least. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the big, uh, discovery, uh, pubs of, uh, PR landed and there's been a release. So huzzah, uh, next up is integrating that into the pub sub router and then bubbling that up into, uh, go IPFS. So, uh, should be, should be fairly quick because these changes have already been made and reverted. They just need to be redone again. Um, and yeah, hopefully that should be available and go IPFS master soon. Nice. That sounds awesome. So this is IPNS over PubSub? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, nice. We could still use um, the, DN the IPNS over DNS spec, um, both to uh, enable like both for just making IPNS better, but also because it will help anyone who wants to do discovery over DNS um, and just giving more like lib P2P discovery options than using the DHT. Cool. That is awesome news. Uh, cool. Uh, any questions? Okay, um, adding performance, uh, Aiden, again. Yeah, all right, so uh, so we, we did some more like looking around uh, and it looks like in order to make IPN, like in order to make ad performance faster, we basically just need to have a database with asynchronous writes instead of waiting for every time we write for the thing to get flushed to disk. You can either do this, uh, I guess, Steven, go ahead. Well, no, we don't absolutely need it. There are ways to hack around this. It just makes it simpler. Well, so we, I, I guess it's a matter of phrasing. We, we definitely need this. You can either do this by just having a database that supports asynchronous writes, or you could do this by writing a layer on top of a synchronous database that effectively makes it asynchronous, right? By like buffering stuff in between. One of these is like flip a switch in Badger, and the other one is make the buffered DAG uh, part of our API uh, perform better. Um, you could also you could also just try and like get around this a little bit by putting in a synchronous layer on top of the synchronous one, just like caching all the transactions and like periodically flushing them. But that feels uh, even hackier than than just making the buffer DAG better. So we're going to try and push uh, in the links in the in the notes. There's a link to the 
making the data, allowing the data stores to be asynchronous. Um, gonna try and push on some people this week to see if we can get movement there. Otherwise, I guess we'll just, we're just gonna have to deal with what we already have, which is the buffer DAG, but it's gonna be much more invasive to go that way. Well, I think the current plan is to make the buffer DAG better just in general, um, because that will probably help us regardless of what we do here. And in parallel, try to uh, modify the data interface to allow for asynchronous writes. Um, yeah, so like, it, basically the trade-off here is that the, the data store, or sorry, if we let the data store do asynchronous writes, then we let the OS decide what to buffer. And the OS knows about memory pressure and knows about disk IO and all that kind of stuff. So we can better schedule, better buffer that we can do outside of uh, outside the data store. On the other hand, like uh, doing this outside the data store allows us to batch calls to the OS, um, which could also help uh, improve performance. So, like it's not entirely either or, it's kind of like, we're gonna get the most performance benefit from uh, making things that writes async. We're probably gonna get some benefit by buffering in the application itself as well. Nice, okay. Anybody else, any questions? Are we, we good? All right. Cool, super interesting, thank you. Um, all right, uh, migration to multi hash keys in block store. This is still pending the migrator tool actually being um, merged into IPFS repo. The pull request has been reviewed um, and that just needs to, uh, it needs the changes to be done and then to be merged and released. And then, then we're good to start the, or create the migration that does that, um, does that work. And I think that actually has already been done and there are pull requests for it but it just needs to be then reviewed as well so um yeah the plan is to get the migrator the ability to do migrations into the next release and uh the actual migrations into a future release maybe 41 or more that is the status on that one any questions Okay, uh, sweet. So next up, we've got IPFS mount. I think Dominic is not here. So, okay. Um, bit swap updates. I see a Dirk has arrived. Hey, yeah, I've uh, just been working through some code reviews and um, also came up with a couple of test, uh, test plans for bit swap in test ground. And then Stephen, it looks like you got an update about um, parallel reads. Uh, yeah, we merged that to FS Master, uh, and there was, I think, significant improvement, at least reported by some people, on uh, uh, fetching proof parameters for cluster. Personally, I didn't notice any changes. Or, well, sorry, I take that back. I noticed some really weird behavior where, like, it was slow, and then it just, like, slowly ramped up over time until it was fast. Um, I'm not sure if that was me, Comcast, or something else, uh, because other people were saying, oh, yeah, it's like, like uh, what was it? It used to take... Uh, a minute to download the params, and then it switched. Or it went down to thirty seconds, so twice as fast. Uh, so at least we know it's probably two x speed up. Um, I'm assuming it's more actually like it's a better speed up internally inside cluster, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, that's uh, all I have to say. Cool. Uh, thank you for the updates. Um... Good, good, good. Okay, uh, moving on to the async await refactor. I don't think I have any news, but Jess Lip P2P looks like you are storming ahead. Yes. So the uh, plain text to internal crypto refactor for Lip P2P and private networking that has all been merged. So that's good to go. Uh, Vashko is currently working on the peer store refactor. So it's the peer book. Um, and then the registrar, which is going to be part of Connection Manager, and that's going to let us register like topologies and custom topologies and stuff, which is going to be quite nice. Um, and then the PubSub PRs are also in progress, getting close. They just need some stuff from the registrar and the peer store. And then identify refactors underway. That's also going to include identify push, which lip 2 js hasn't supported yet. 
Um, so that will be in the, the refactor as well. And then um, circuit relay and discovery are slided for this week as well. Nice. How many uh, how like how many left have we got then in lib P2P? How many how many repos and modules are we approaching the the finish line in some form or another? We're getting quite close. Like the core is the main thing that's left, um, and then uh, SecIO, which uh, MKG is is working on part of that refactor. So. I guess core is going to be pretty big, but you've got a PR for that underway, right? Yeah. So that's that's like a slew of PRs going on for that. Right. Uh, Vashko is finishing up PubSub and then Vashko is also going to be working on the, the DHT this week. But we are, we are getting there. Nice. Very cool. Very exciting. Um, all right. Any, any questions on async awaiting? Okay. Um, cool. Uh, so then we have design review proposals. Um, we I, So last week I said uh, that I would start a proposal for uniting the files API. And I've been working on that. Um, I've been writing a lot of words down and, uh, and thinking about it a lot. It's not quite finished. I haven't submitted the pull request, but it's kind of nearing it. But it's, it's a proposal. I'm kind of, I guess, I put it down here today um, just to sort of see how gauge the kind of the, what people are feeling like is it is it a non-starter or is it um is it is it something that we feel could um could take off like if you've got big um concerns with it or um uh, then please like just get in touch with me irc or you know slack or whatever um uh but i'll i'll probably get it well, I need to read through it a number of times and see. And there's a bunch, there's a few things I need to kind of finish off and add. Um, but then I will submit a PR and um, open it up to people to have a look through. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of background information in there as well as um, identification of like what the problems are or as I see them um, objectively as possible <laughs> uh, and uh, and some some proposals for solutions to try and alleviate some of the things that are happening and um, and hopefully make it a whole lot better and easier to use um, whilst trying to maintain some sort of um, uh, some sort of like similarity to what's already there without you know, changing it beyond all recognition um, and trying to keep the actual delta for changes we'd have to make um, as small as I can. Um, but there's a couple of small things that we, I think feel we can do to really improve things, but there are some bigger things in there as well. Um, so like, if you're interested in that, then have a look. Um, I will hopefully submit the proposal and we can maybe schedule like a, a maybe next week I'll, I'll have a like scheduled meeting and we can kind of people who are interested in it can, we can kind of talk over some of the changes um, uh, and uh, uh, get everyone involved who needs to have a say in this. Cause I, obviously it's, it's, it's the files API, it's core to IPFS. It's the, the thing that people are gonna be interacting with most when they use IPFS. So it needs to, it needs to be good. It needs to be like streamlined and easy to use. Um, and I'm hoping that we can maybe make it better. Um, so yeah, that's me. And then um, Alex has a proposal for improving the HTTP API. Would you like to talk to that? Yeah, so, so we have this HTTP API um, that has always been a bit of a, an oddity uh, in it respects and like no known convention has ever been seen before um, on the face of the planet, which makes it interesting to work with if if you're a new contributor and you've you know you've, you're, you're used to certain conventions that other systems have and so on and so forth. Um, that's always been kind of a, annoying, but it's kind of been in the background because we've had these API libraries in front of it. I mean, you don't have to interact with it directly that much. Um, Except for I noticed a little while ago that errors don't work in it because it uses HTTP trailers to relay error information. So if you have a streaming interface, and we're with all this async await stuff, we're moving towards having streaming stuff everywhere. Um, if you're in the browser, you like no browsers support HTTP trailers. 
So if you, uh, you're processing a stream and the stream errors, then the stream just ends, then you don't get an error message or, or anything. Um, this has worked in Node previously because uh, Node does support HTTP trailers, but since we're moving everything to use uh, fetch, um, it started to bring browser semantics into Node. And with, along with those browser semantics, that means no more HTTP trailers. So it means that our error handling in Node doesn't work either. And it means that in the browser, it's never worked if you ever used uh, fetch or any kind of uh, streaming API. So um, I took a look at the HTTP API and so a long time ago when I first started working at PI, I looked at it and I was like, oh, what is this? Um, and so I'd messing around with a, a wrapper for it that would kind of make it resty um, so that you can use tools to do things like have you know, uh, documentation generated from it and have tools that you can then use to ping the API and all this kind of stuff, generate clients for it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it never really went anywhere, but I did do a lot of thinking about how it could all fit together. Um, and so that has kind of informed the design that I'm proposing uh, in this PR. Also the IPFSX stuff that Alan's been working on um, and, and his unified files API, which is kind of, we've been talking about for a while. Uh, and kind of taking some of those ideas forward and, and putting them into the HTTP API, which means we'll have a smaller surface area. Uh, there'll be like more, uh, like the interactions that you have with it will be simpler, um, which will shift some of the complexity onto the client. Um, but that's kind of necessary if you don't want to have to do lots of weird, like have lots of extra arguments. So like the, the HTTP API is kind of modeled on the Go one, and the Go one is modeled on the CLI. Um, and so you end up having lots of kind of behavior that you might not necessarily want to expose over HTTP. Um, it's things like, like if you take a path, there's an argument to um, import it recursively, like which makes no sense over an HTTP API. It just keeps sending me files, like do the recursive parsing on the client and just keep sending requests, stuff like that. Um, so it's trying to remove some of that stuff. It should be simpler to, to implement, simpler to understand and simpler to maintain. Um, so yeah, it's in a pre pre pull review, pull, pull request uh, state uh, comments welcome. Please do get involved. All right, so that sounds really exciting. Um, we should sync up and see if we're, what you've proposed there is gonna be, dif uh, gonna be difficult or compatible with the, what I've been working on uh, for the core API. I reckon, yeah, there should be, I mean, there's a significant amount of crossover, um, but I've kind of done it with an eye to the changes that we've got coming down the pipeline. Um, but yeah, we can, we can definitely sync up on that. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, please do, um, get involved with the pull request for the HTTP API, um, give it a once over. And if, if you're interested in, in that sort of thing, um, that would be super cool. Um, because it would be nice to have, have that become a little bit more sane, a little bit more what, uh, it, developers expect. Um, and, and yeah, a bit better at dealing with errors for starters. Um, and yeah, that would be, that'd be cool. And I will uh, hopefully submit a pull request to the, for what I'm working on the uniting the files API. Just give you a, a kind of idea. This has been asked uh, for since I get the, I think the issue, the first issue I found for it was from 2016. So it's been in the pipeline for a while. Uh, so yeah, it, we're going to make it better. Um, and hopefully soon. <laughs> Um, but yeah, cool. Um, so next up, where are we? We I've got not a lot, not a lot of questions left. But blockers asks says no. Blockers and asks there is anyone got anything else they would like to put down or say uh, uh, in terms of being blocked and would like people to look at things or anything? Okay. Um, any any random questions or comments or things? How are we all feeling? Pretty stoked. It's exciting times. Um, all right, cool. Uh, and parking lot, finally, parking lot. Any anything else? Uh, I saw there was an issue filed recently about um, someone adding a whole bunch of data 
uh, with no hash, and then it seems like there's memory leaking. Uh, I wonder if it's related to the issue we already know about. Uh, no, I think this is because when we add files with uh, the in-memory hasher, or sorry, the like, hasher link, we do it in memory. We don't actually create a temporary record on disk. But then we should, they should go away after the query is completed, right? They should, but if, I, I'm not sure what these, what this person was adding. I thought they were adding a large directory, in which case just build and build and build and build and build. So they were saying they're adding and adding and adding and it crashed. Uh, I'm not sure if they're running multiple commands. I thought they were just running one. No, I think it was multiple. Like I ran a local test, just adding things like a million times and you'll see like it keeps growing and it doesn't, you wait a few minutes after and it doesn't clear. And I don't know if it's related to um, uh, our prior issues about like using our mock data store instead of like going at it a little more heavy handedly or. I'm, I'm guessing that we have some internal pointer to something that's holding things open. Uh, that is like, if you're not, uh, this goes some long running Go routine that has a, a handle or a copy of the um, of this like in memory uh, data store, a reference to it, it'll just keep alive indefinitely. That sounds like it might be what's happening. Uh, one sec. Can't remember if hash link actually works. It also seems like we, we still use a peer store, even when we have a null data store, which seems a little awkward. We use like an in-memory peer store. We always use an in-memory peer store for everything. Um, but we yeah. Need, yeah, I mean, we probably, uh, I think we need a peer store in this case. Like ideally we would be doing, currently we have some hack, basically make, make, a, make a fake in-memory node. Um, actually, I thought we, so we're creating, oh no, no, okay, we're creating a nil, actually that's odd. So we're creating a new node with a nil repo, not an in-memory repo, a nil repo, uh, which should just throw everything away. Uh, so yeah, we have memory leak somewhere. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It's probably because we're never actually closing the nil node. Yeah, we're never actually closing the nil node, that's the issue. We just never want to close. Live debugging, I love it. Just in case, because I, I didn't catch it at the start, but this is so this is only when you're adding things with the only hash option to go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think right. this is a one line fix. Nice. Submitting the PR now. All right. Um, cool. Thanks everyone for coming along. It's been really fun this week, <laughs> uh, as always. And um, um have a lovely week this week and um i'll see you next time for some more uh core implementations action uh, and and it'll be even more exciting than it has been this today uh so bye everyone see you next week bye, bye.